Hello, it's Stephen Hewitt from Stanley Road Baptist Church here in the next part of our series in the book of Galatians. And we've been seeing how Paul, the apostle, who went to Galatia, preached about Jesus, saw lots of people in this that area of the area of Galatia become Christians. How Paul's very passionate about those Galatians really keeping hold of the truths of the gospel because there are people coming into the community who are leading them astray or really in danger of leading them astray. Now what he's been doing all the way through has been reminding us, Stanley Road as Christians in the UK in 2023, how important it is to hold on to the truths of the gospel and how countercultural it is to believe in Jesus and to believe that we're saved not by anything we do to ourselves to earn our salvation, but by trusting in Christ who's done it all for us at the cross. We read of Jesus taking the curse of sin that should be on us. He takes it on himself at the cross. It means that we now, as Christians, have the Holy Spirit within us. We are described as adopted into God's family. There are no barriers between us. We saw that in the end of chapter 3. All these things are really important to the Galatians and they should be to us. But Paul is really having to work hard because what is happening is the agitators are coming into Galatia and saying what you need to do is you do need to go back to some of the old barriers. OK, yes, believe in Jesus, but you also need to carry out the works of the law that the, the, the Jews had always done. So there's Jewish Christians who would hold on to those things anyway because of their culture and their background. But now these non-Jewish Christians who wouldn't have had that background, they're being told that they do have to do the Jewish customs, particularly circumcision, particularly holy days and particularly eating the right kinds of food. And Paul's like, no, no, you've been saved by Christ. That is why you are justified. That is why... You can be declared righteous, right with God, forgiven, forgiven. You don't need to do anything extra to earn your salvation. And Paul's been going on and on about this, particularly through chapters three and four with some really deep theology. But we get right to the end of chapter four, which is our passage today, which is chapter four, verses 21 to 31. And in this passage, Paul's already referred to Abraham a number of times, saying that when we look at Abraham in the Old Testament, his relationship with God, one of faith, with God crediting that faith to him as righteousness, is the same as it is for Christians. So Paul wants these Galatian believers to understand that this has been God's way all the way through. It's not about doing works in order to achieve salvation. Salvation, no, is about faith in God humbling ourselves. So that's where we get back to Abraham in this story. And in, he wants to contrast two of Abraham's children. Now, a little bit of background. So Abraham was given a promise by God that you have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. But the problem was, two problems really, Abraham was old and his wife Sarah, she was barren. She hadn't been able to have children and she was getting on too. And it seems like this promise that God had made to them, it wasn't coming to pass. It wasn't coming to pass. So what happens? What happens? Well, Abraham, Sarah, his wife, talks to him and says, why don't you, because I'm barren, I can't have children. Why don't you go and have a child with Hagar? Hagar was the Egyptian uh, slave who served the family, Abraham's family, Abraham's household. Why don't you go and sleep with Hagar and have a child with her? And maybe he will inherit the promise, inherit the blessings that God had said would come to Abraham's family. So Abraham does that and the baby is born Ishmael, Ishmael. Now, 13 years later, and God had said to Abraham, you will have a child. The promises are not to come through Ishmael. And 13 years later, with Sarah into her 90s, she does have a child via Abraham. And that child is called Isaac. Now, Paul goes back to this episode and he says, contrast the two sons and he contrasts Ishmael with Isaac so I've just got my notes here so I get this right so Ishmael is born from Hagar Hagar is a slave she he's born of the flesh the decision is let's do this the flesh says that he, Hagar will be able to have a child so that's what we're going to go and do born of the flesh and uh, 
Paul says in the passage that we're looking from today that the, 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 the birth of Ishmael is like Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where God uh, meets with Moses and he gives him the Ten Commandments and the laws that we read, many of the laws that we read about in the Old Testament. And he says that links Ishmael, Hagar, Sinai with Jerusalem of that time, which is where many of the Judaizers are, the, the agitators, the ones who are wanting to make sure that Christians follow Jewish works as well that they have a jewish uh, that they take on the ways of the jewish background he says that's linked with ishmael too so contrast that with isaac isaac is born of sarah sarah is a free woman isaac is as a son is born by divine promise the work of the spirit paul uses that phrase he doesn't quite say it but isaac is linked with mount zion a sense of freedom and then he talks about heavenly Jerusalem. In the Bible we read of the, the heavenly city, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem coming down to earth. And this is what Paul says, that that corresponds to Isaac. The Jerusalem that is above is free and is our mother, Paul says. So you've got these two contrasts. Ishmael, slave, born of the flesh, earthly Jerusalem. And Isaac, free, born of the spirit, heavenly Jerusalem and Paul says and this is this is a controversial switch Jews would link themselves with Isaac because he's their ancestor but actually Paul says the way they're acting is enforcing slavery which would link them then with Ishmael who is the son of the slave link them with the earthly Jerusalem not the heavenly Jerusalem to come instead it's the Christians who are the true descendants of, Isaac, of Abraham, true line of Isaac, because they are born of divine promise. We, we here as Christians today may not have our lineage that goes all the way back to Abraham, nationality-wise or, or, or genealogically-wise, if that's the right word, but actually spiritually we are children. We are sons of Abraham. We are children of God. We are in that line with Isaac. So that's, that's what's really controversial. And he's saying to these Galatians, don't go back to the old ways because that is slavery. Keep with Christ because that is freedom. That is freedom. Now, when you read in the Old Testament about Ishmael and Isaac, Ishmael's older than Isaac, and there's this tension between Hagar and Ishmael and Sarah and Isaac. And actually what happens is Hagar and Ishmael are sent away. And Paul's saying there will always be tension. There will always be tension between the Ishmael line and the Isaac line. And Paul's using this as a picture, uh, uh, what's called um, an anal analogy or um, uh, an allegory of actually the tension that exists in Galatia and exists where all Christians are. This tension to go back or to go to want to do works to show our salvation. And Paul's saying, no, don't do that. Freedom is in Christ. Slavery is in works of the law. You know, just think about that. Just think about that. If you're, if you believe your salvation is down to your good behaviour, for example, or it's down to how much money you have in the bank, or how well behaved your family is, or, or how uh, how many times you're able to get to church, or all the thing, or, or all the things you're able to do to serve the Lord in various ministries. Well, if that's what you believe your salvation's based in, what happens if, for example, you can't get to church physically? You're unable to get, or your children start misbehaving or fa your family just unravels or you're not successful you lose your job and you don't have any money or a relationship that you that matters breaks down all these things that you might put your trust in as as, as show as as being your salvation justifying yourself they can they can all fizzle out and they they can become when they when they take over our lives they become slaves so then when they we they struggle when we don't aren't able to do them when we can't live up to what the standards we think we need to live up to we feel disappointed we feel disconsolate we feel anxious we think actually does God love me am I actually saved and that's slavery Christ has died for us that we may be free that we may be free Paul wants these Galatians to know that and God through his spirit through his word wants us to know that, that freedom in Christ so this is quite a complicated passage and it's important to go back to your Old Testament, particularly sort of Genesis 12 onwards, particularly Genesis 16, to understand the story. But Paul's using that not necessarily as a direct interpretation 
of that passage, but as a picture to contrast slavery and freedom. And remember, he's doing this because this is really important to him to get across to the Galatians. He's in chapters three and four of this book in particular, he's used scripture, he's used theology, he's used their experience, the Galatians, their experience of conversion. He's, he's used lots of different arguments. He's, he's given them a, a, a carrot, look at what you are, you're the family of God. He's given lots of different ways of putting across his argument that says to these Galatians, hold on to the gospel, it is freedom in Christ. And that's why it's important for people like me when we speak about this and for people like you when you engage with this text is to see how important it is to Paul, which therefore means how important it should be to us to live out the gospel. I'm going on a little bit, so I'm going to stop. Let me pray and I hope uh, this time has been a blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can enjoy freedom in Christ. Lord, as we dip back into the Old Testament, as we draw on uh, episodes from there, and we try to follow Paul's line and Paul's argument. We pray, Lord, that you would speak truth to us. Holy Spirit, hold, give us stuff to hold on to in our hearts that we need to. We thank you, Lord, that we are free in Christ because of what he's done at the cross. We thank you, Lord, that we have an inheritance to come, the heavenly Jerusalem. But we're conscious, Lord, of the tension that might exist in society, but also that exists in us to want to go back to proving ourselves by works. Lord, help us. To hold on to freedom in Christ and may that be a blessing to us and remove any sense of anxiety over our future hope. We're confident Lord because of Christ in Jesus name. Amen. Now it might be you've been watching these and maybe you'd like to come and join us. Come along on a Sunday half past ten and this week we get into the final sort of section Galatians 5 to 6 where we start thinking about what is holiness. What is holiness. Thank you for watching.